Hi, my name's Anil Seth. I'm a neuroscientist, and I'm also author of this new book, Being You, A New Science of Consciousness. Now, consciousness really is one of our greatest remaining mysteries in all of science and philosophy. How does it happen? How does this complex electrochemical machinery inside our brains and our bodies give rise to a rich inner universe, to experiences of the world around us, and to the experience of being a self within that world? Now, some people think that consciousness is so challenging that it's beyond the reach of science altogether. Perhaps we need a revolution in physics, or perhaps some kind of magical thinking where consciousness is fundamental and ubiquitous, spread out through the entire universe. Now, I don't think that way at all. And in the book, I'll show how science, pretty much as we have it, a rich and heady brew of philosophy, neuroscience, physics, and psychology can go a long way towards explaining how and why the circuitry inside our brains and bodies brings an inner universe into existence. Now, the book takes us on a tour of the cutting edge of consciousness science and also presents some of my own theories and ideas about it too. We start with the challenge of measuring consciousness. Is it possible to put a number to how conscious someone or something is? Well, it turns out it might be. And this is a really significant development, not only in the lab, but also in clinics around the world, where we can now diagnose residual awareness in patients following severe brain injury. Then we come to the idea of perception of the world around us as a kind of controlled hallucination. Now, it seems intuitive, perhaps, that the world just pours itself into our minds through the transparent windows of our senses. But what's really going on is very different. Everything we experience is an active construction. It's a brain-based best guess about the causes of the sensory signals. The world we experience comes just as much, if not more, from the inside out as from the outside in. At the heart of the book, we apply the same idea to the experience of being a self, to being you or being me. Now, it turns out the self is not a thing that does the perceiving that sits in the brain somewhere behind the windows of your eyes gazing out at the world. No, the self is a perception too. Or rather, it's a bundle of perceptions that have the function of keeping the body alive. And the upshot of all this is where we get to my own theory of consciousness as a kind of beast machine. This is the idea that all of our experiences, whether they're of the world around us or of the self within that world, are very closely tied to our nature as living and breathing machines. We experience the world around us and of being a self within that world with, through, and because of our living bodies. Now, in the rest of the book, I explore some of the quite dramatic implications of thinking that way. We talk about free will. Free will isn't some spooky, uncaused cause that swoops into the brain and causes things to happen that otherwise wouldn't. No, free will turns out to be another kind of self-related perception, but a very special one. Then we explore consciousness in other animals, and it turns out that there's a vast universe of alternative other minds, very different from our own parochial human example of what it is to be conscious. And finally, what about consciousness in AI? Could we build a conscious machine? Should we build a conscious machine? There's a lot of hype in AI. But if we think of consciousness as closely related to being alive, more so than being smart, maybe the prospect of a sentient computer isn't quite as close as we might think. Now, altogether, whenever I think about the science of consciousness, I'm struck not only by what a grand scientific challenge it is and how exciting it is to work on, but also how personal it is. Studying consciousness means studying what it is to be human, what it is to be a person in this world. And that's what I ultimately hope you take away from reading this book. It's an appreciation of the wonder of what it is to be anyone, what it is to be you.